Hello, my friends. Welcome back. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of doing a class guide, don't worry, those will resume shortly. I am going to be doing an item tier list for the tier one items. If people enjoy this, let me know and we'll continue on with the tier two, three and four items. And of course, since this is a bit of an experiment, if people don't enjoy it, we'll just go back to doing class guides. So either way, you all win. All right. So just to give you a bit brief overview, I'm just going to be doing a quick tier list for all the tier one items. I have divided it into six tiers. We've got uh, S tier items that you pick on every character or with very, very few exceptions. Almost every run, you're going to take this item when it shows up. A tier items you take basically every time if you use any of the stats they provide. B tier items are going to be items that have some real disadvantages, but still provide good stats. So you have to weigh whether the disadvantage is worth taking. C tier items, I think, are going to be mostly filler, stuff that you'll often take, but that either provides a minor disadvantage or minor advantage or a significant enough disadvantage that there will be a lot of runs where you don't pick it. D tier items are situational, only work for some characters, and F tier items are garbage for everyone. So hopefully that gives you just a quick idea of what we're doing, and let's get into it. So, just going through the tier 1 items right now. These are white items, common items that show up in the shop at early levels. The more luck you have, the fewer of these will show up. First off, the Alien Tongue. This gives you plus 30% pickup range. I think this is actually better than it looks, because extra pickup range is both economy in some form and also helps with consumable healing. So I'm going to place this in tier C. I don't think you want it in every run, but I think you'll often take it if it shows up. The Alien Worm, I'm going to put in tier D, because that reduces your consumable healing, which I think is a huge disadvantage, and gives you HP regeneration in exchange. So while that is sometimes useful, if you're not building HP regen, you're never taking it, and you still often won't because consumable healing is so valuable. The Baby Elephant, another D tier item. This one only works if you have already pumped luck significantly, uh, and most of the time there's just better stuff to pick. Baby Gecko, I think, is slightly better than that. Similar to the Alien Worm, it gives you some economy, and plus 10 range is useful enough. I think we can put that in tier C. Next, the bag. So bag gives you 15 whenever you pick up a crate, 15 cash whenever you pick up a crate at the very tiny cost of 1% move speed. This is our first S tier item. You should pick the bag 100% of the time when you see it, unless it's like wave 19 or something, and it'll never pay for itself. Next up, the bat. So bat gives you plus 2% lifesteal in exchange for minus 2 Harvesting. Minus 2 Harvesting is a real cost, but 2% lifesteal is still valuable, so I think that can go in the B tier. Next up, the Beanie. 4% speed for minus 6 range. I think minus 6 range almost never matters at all, so I'm pretty happy to put the Beanie in the B tier, because 4% speed is also a fairly minor bonus, but there's definitely a lot of characters that want it, so... I think that's worth picking up many, many times. Next up, Boiling Water. That's here. And the Boiling Water gives you plus two elemental damage in exchange for minus one max HP. Uh, this is obviously, if you are using elemental damage, you're going to grab it. So you always take it if you are using this stat. Similarly, the book if you're using engineering, you will always take the book, so it's A tier. Boxing Glove, plus three knockback for no downsides at all, but plus three knockback is itself a downside because it makes it harder to focus specific items, uh, specific enemies, um, and basically has no upside. So this is an F tier item. It is a guaranteed waste of resources every time you see it. Broken Mouth, I think, at minus one HP regeneration for plus five max HP. This is another S tier item. Five max HP is a huge bonus, It's uh, and the minus one HP regeneration is barely a cost, even if you're building HP regeneration. Five max HP is going to let you survive an extra hit through most of the game. Really good item, you should take it pretty much every time you see it. Butterfly, 2% lifesteal for minus 1 elemental damage. Obviously, if you're building lifesteal, you're going to take that every time, even if you have a loss, uh, even if you're building elemental damage, that's a really good trade-off. Cake, 
plus three maximum HP for minus one percent damage. Now this is more of a trade-off and more of a uh, less of a benefit than the broken mouth. I still think this is a very good item, but I don't. I think there are some characters and some runs where you won't take it. So I'm going to put it in in A here. The charcoal gives you one elemental damage, two melee damage, and minus two harvesting. Minus two harvesting, again, a real cost. So just like the bat, I think we're going to say this is a B tier item. The bonuses are good, but the penalty is real. So you have to weigh whether it's worth losing two money at a wave for the rest of the game if, in order to get this. Two money and two XP. The claw tree gives you one melee damage and 3% crit chance for minus one maximum HP. Um, if you're doing any kind of melee build or any kind of crit chance build, this is really good. Minus one max HP is not really a penalty. Claw tree is really solid. The coffee. Uh, coffee, I think, is quietly maybe the best item in the game, with the possible exception of bag or recycling machine, something else that gives you a ton of extra money. Coffee is an S tier item. There are very, very few characters that don't want 10% attack speed for minus 2% damage. This is a huge out increase in your DPS output for just about everyone. Only characters that literally don't attack won't take this. After the coffee, we have yet another standout item, the coupon. Just minus 5% the, in the shop for the rest of the game. This pays for itself usually in one shop, maybe two, and just ends up being a ton of economy over the course of the game. Cute Monkey, 8% chance to heal 1 whenever you pick up a material, but you lose 1 ranged damage. So characters that are building ranged damage might want to avoid this, but for the most part this is going to be a lot of healing. I think we can pretty comfortably put that in A tier. Moving on a little bit, we've got the Defective Steroids. These give you melee damage and max HP for minus 3% attack speed. I think this item is okay. Um, minus 3% attack speed is a real penalty, but if you use the melee damage, it's good. I think we'll put it in, in the B tier, although I f feel like it could go up or down a tier, it, depending on how you value this item. But the penalty is real, but the bonuses are good, and if you use all of the bonuses, it's worth picking up. Duct tape gives you one armor for minus two maximum HP. I think this is a... a another B tier item. You're going to pick it most of the time, but you will rarely like go out of your way to pick it. Dynamite. Now, dynamite is, of course, really good if you are building explosion damage, because it gives you plus 15% explosive damage, but it's a D tier item for almost every character, so this, this one will move around based on whether you're building explosive damage, but for the most part, this is just a waste of money. Fertilizer gives you 8 harvesting for minus 1 melee damage. I think this is another classic S tier item. Even if you use the melee damage, this is going to be so much money over the course of a run if you get it early that you are going to grab this every single time. Again, we've got Gentle Alien, another S tier item. I think probably the single best item in the game after uh, maybe Bag, but... Gentle Alien gives you extra enemy spawns, extra damage, and extra max HP. So the downside is actually an upside, because extra enemy spawns means more money. Extra max HP is obviously really good, and 5% damage is really nice. So Gentle Alien, you're going to want, you want as many of these as you can get. If you are having trouble clearing through the enemies, then uh, something's wrong with your build, and you should look into that more than not taking Gentle Alien. Here... After that guy, we've got the glasses, plus 20 range for no downsides. I think this is yet another classic D tier item. If you are desperate for range, or if you are a character that scales off of range dam, you know, scales your damage off of range somehow, then it's fine. Or if you've really nerfed your range by picking items that reduce your range, you can pick up the glasses to kind of repair that stat. Otherwise, you're never going to pick them. Goat Skull is 3 melee damage for minus 2% crit chance. I think this is an A tier item. Uh, if you are building melee damage, you're always going to use it. Um, minus 2% crit chance is barely a penalty, and 3 melee damage is actually quite a bit. The Gummy Berserker. 
This one gives you 5% attack speed and 15 range for minus 1 armor. Minus 1 armor is a huge penalty, but some characters will want the range, and 5% attack speed is enough of a bonus that I'm not going to put this in F, but I think it, it lives in D. You could maybe bump that up to C just because 5% attack speed is good, but overall I think the Gummy Berserker is not going to serve you well, typically. Next up, the Head Injury. This gives you 6% damage for minus 8 range. I think this is an, another classic A tier item. Almost every character is going to pick it, but if your range is getting too low, maybe you can consider avoiding it. But uh, generally, the head injury is going to be a must pick whenever you see it. Hedgehog gives you 2 melee and 1 range damage for minus 1 HP regeneration. Again, if you use either of those stats, this item is great, really efficient. Helmet gives you one armor for minus 2% speed. Minus 2% speed is a real penalty, so we're going to put that in the B tier, because you do have to weigh whether you're going to take it or not, based on whether the penalty actually matters. Uh, but plus one armor is a really solid advantage. Next up, Injection. Injection is 7% damage for minus 2 maximum HP, and I think this is... Maybe even an S tier item. I can't think of a situation where I don't pick this usually. I think we'll err on the safe side and put this in the A tier because if your HP is low, you might not pick it. Um, whereas S tier items, I really want to reserve for items where you pick them literally every time you see them. Insanity. So this gives you plus 6% crit chance for minus 3% damage. I think this is a C tier item. Actually, maybe even D tier. It's possible I, I didn't need both C and D tiers. Um, I think this is a C tier item because it's pickable enough situationally. If your damage is high and your crit chance is low, it's good. Landmines. Uh, landmines are an F tier item. There are very few scenarios where you would pick them. I guess uh, if you're building engineering or have construct benefits, they can be okay. So maybe we'll bump those up to D tier. I think they're somewhere between D and F. Lemonade. Solidly in the S tier. This is a huge bonus. It's usually very cheap. And stacking up consumable healing is one of the best ways to heal. Lens. This gives you plus one range damage for minus five range. It's kind of a minor benefit and... Minus 5 range for ranged heroes can actually be something of a penalty. So even though it is, you, you'll you almost always pick it. I'm going to put it in B tier, just because the actual benefit that you get out of it is lower than the items in A tier. Lost Duck, I think, is another S tier item. 10 luck for minus 1 elemental damage. Even if you're building elemental damage, you're always going to take that deal. Luck is really good. Lumberjack Shirt. That's another S tier item. Uh, one thing that I think is kind of cool about Brotato is that so many of these tier one items are S tier. As we get into the higher tiers, you're going to see fewer S tier items and more situational items just because they become more expensive. When things are really cheap, it's much easier them, for them to, to always be picked. Lumberjack shirt is S tier because it has a ton of utility. It improves your future shops because it's a unique item. So when you pick it, it comes out of the pool, making your future shops that much better. Um, and it has a ton of stuff that it synergizes with. Like if you get the pocket factory or are building turrets or any form of damage that happens across the map, the lumberjack shirt can clear trees for you. It can leave consumables on the ground ready for you to heal off of them later. Lumberjack shirt is really, really good. Mushroom is next, and that's all the way down here. Uh, this is 3 HP regeneration for 2 luck. I think this is a small enough benefit and a real enough penalty that we're going to put that in the C tier. If you're building HP regen, it's still usually worth taking, but you do have to weigh the actual penalty. Mutation, similarly, it's 1 ranged damage or 1 elemental damage. Um, for minus 3% speed. Actually, I think I'm going to bump that one down to D. Even though flat damage is usually a good purchase, minus 3% speed is a real penalty, and so mutation at the opportunity cost of actually buying it as well is really rough to pick up. Peaceful B gives you 4% dodge and plus 4 harvesting. 
for minus one melee and minus one ranged damage. Obviously for some characters, like if you don't build melee or ranged damage, this is going to be a pick every single time. But if you do build ranged damage specifically, you might want to avoid this because it's twice as hard to get ranged damage. So the penalty is half as much for melee damage. That said, four harvesting and four dodge is actually a lot of stats. So I think Peaceful B is worth taking more or less every time you see it. Pencil gives you two engineering for minus attack, one attack speed and minus one crit chance. Well, any engineering build isn't going to care about attack speed or crit chance. So we'll grab the pencil into A tier. If you use the stats at all, you're going to grab the pencil. Plant gives you 3% regeneration for minus one lifesteal. Um, this one is going to be, I would say, a nice B tier item. Typically, I think you should avoid having HP regeneration be your main healing, which is why I'm putting it in B tier. But if you are building HP regeneration, it has no penalty because you're very rarely going to build regen and lifesteal at the same time. And so the plant is going to be really valuable in that case. So you won't take it most of the time, but when you do want it, you always want it. Propeller hat is plus... 10 luck for minus 2% damage. I think similar to the duck, this is slightly worse than the duck usually, but I think this is another S tier item. You should just pick this up all the time. Scar gives you plus 20% XP gain for minus one range. It's down here. Minus eight range, excuse me. Um, 20% XP gain is a pretty minor benefit. Minus 8 range is not a huge penalty, but is a real penalty. Um, I'm going to put this in the D tier, because there are some classes that want it, but not a ton. Next up, Sharp Bullet. Um, obviously, if you are... Oh, kind of lost it on the screen here. Let me find that Sharp Bullet. All right, well, it looks like this doesn't have sharp bullet in it unless I'm just missing it, this tier maker list. Um, if I see it later, I'm going to <laughs> put it on the tier. But uh, for now, I'm going to say sharp bullet, which gives you one additional pierce, minus 20% piercing damage and minus 5% damage is an A tier item. If you're a ranged character that uses projectiles, you'll always take it. The Minus damage is real, but the pierce will more than make up for that. It's just going to hit a ton of enemies over and over again. Kind of annoyed that this tier maker list doesn't have it on it, though. <laughs> I'll have to find a new one for next video. Um, or, of course, if somebody feels like making a tier list that just has the tier 2, tier 3, and tier 4 items on it and sending me a link, I'll use that, and then we won't have all this extra stuff getting in the way. Uh... I'm too lazy to do that, but if somebody has the spare time, then by all means, you can help out. All right, so sharp bullet, we're just going to have to remember that that's an A tier item. Snake, um, I guess this is technically an A tier item. If you are building burning, you always want it, but only one character builds burning. So I think we're going to say this is a D tier item. Um, my definitions may need a little bit of work there, but Snake, I think, is going to be an almost never pick. Of course, if you are building a burning effect, i.e. if you're the mage specifically, or for some reason building elemental damage and have a flamethrower, then the Snake is going to be really good for you. The Terrified Onion gives you 4% speed for minus 6 luck. Uh, this is a, a huge penalty and a benefit that is useful sometimes, but only if you really need to increase your speed. I think we'll put that in C tier, because the penalty is definitely real, but the benefit is large enough that you'll take it sometimes. Toxic Sludge gives you two elemental damage for minus 2% dodge. Um, this is worse than Boiling Water or any of those other ones. I'm going to put it in B tier, because it's a worse penalty than Boiling Water, which is a better way to get elemental damage. Tree. Tree is another one of my picks for possibly the single best item in the game. Um, it's a healing item. It's an economy item. It's a, a very valuable item overall. Just makes more trees spawn in the world. And trees give you tons of money. They are guaranteed to drop a consumable or even a crate. 
and so the more trees you have, the better. Always pick tree every single time you see it. Ugly Tooth gives you minus 3% speed, but hitting an enemy removes 10% of their speed. So most of the time you just want to try to one-shot enemies and not worry about like slowing them down or knocking them away or stuff. That's why I have Boxing Glove in F tier. Ugly Tooth, I think, has slightly more utility than the Boxing Glove, but um, is still an item that you're not always going to want to pick. Being a unique means it does pull it out of your pool and gives you some extra shop utility as a result of that. But overall, I think the Ugly Tooth is going to be a C-tier item. The penalty is real. The benefit is situational. Uh, if you're an engineering build, you always want this. If you are a slingshot build or something that does damage that doesn't always kill the enemies, you always want this. If you have lots of pierce but low damage, then you want this. Otherwise, don't pick it. Melee characters pretty much never want it. Weird Food gives you 2 HP recovered from consumables and minus 2% dodge. Here's another S tier item. Um, 2 HP recovered from consumables is an insanely high amount of healing over the course of a run. It's one of the most important items for several classes, maybe the most important item for classes that want to do consumable healing. Minus 2% dodge is an actual penalty, but not high enough to make up for the huge amount of healing this will provide. And finally, the Weird Ghost is plus three max HP, start the next round with one HP. I think this item is really good, like the benefit's good, but it's definitely dangerous to pick, so we're going to put that in C tier. So that's all of the tier one items, with the exception of the piercing bullet, which is missing from this list, but should go in A tier. Here is the final um, tier list, so let me just keep that up on the screen. As you can see, the tier 1 items are fairly evenly split. The tier 2 and above items are going to be split up more towards the bottom end of the scale, because there's going to be more items that are just too much money for what they give you, whereas the tier 1 items are typically very cheap to buy. Overall, I think you are going to see that most of the tier 1 items that are in S tier are economy items, and the ones that give you damage for very little trade-offs are A tier. Then you get to more situational items as you go further down the list. Anyways, that's the tier 1 item tier list for Brotato. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. We'll be back with tiers 2, 3, and 4 if you have, and if so, just let me know in the comments. And uh, thank you, my friends, for watching. As always, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game analysis. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers, folks. GG.